All right, Kevin. So I'm, I'm catching you uh, before a flight to Montreal. Yeah. Talk about, uh, first off, just, just your decision to, uh, to, to train in Montreal. Uh, that was a big one for me. You know, a lot of uh, these past couple months, I've just been focusing on myself. And, and, and the main thing for me is getting back to my winning ways. Uh, one of the big things that, that's been missing in, in my training camps and everything is a head coach. And uh, I feel like after going to Montreal, after training to try to start with Faraz, Faraz is definitely that guy to take me to the next level. No more of just, you know, oh, I'm gonna just do this fight and then I worry about it later. Uh, it, it, it's, it's time for me to do the things that's make, gonna make me feel uncomfortable. So as soon as I leave here from this interview, I'm gonna go to Montreal where I really don't know anybody like that. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm away from my family, I'm away from my home, I'm away from everything. And uh, I, it, it's gonna make me a better fight. Do they have, uh, I've actually never been to uh, TriStar. Do they have dorms there? Are you staying in dorms or what are you doing? Ah, uh, no, I'm not saying, you know, look, I'm a little, little. Oh, okay, you know, a little, little more bougie little, than little, that. Little, <laughs> a little more bougie nowadays. Uh, I got a place in like, uh, in, in downtown Montreal. So it's, it's okay. you know. I feel what the whole life is like. That's that's what I did when I went there two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. I got a place separate from the gym just to get the feel of the city, get you know everything. Uh, that all comes into play, I think, when you when you talk about doing a training camp somewhere. What do you think you were lacking? You were missing the most in terms of uh, you said you're missing a head coach. Yeah, is that like fight preparations? Is it game plans? Is it like in? in in fight adjustments, like where, where was that showing up the most? I think it's mostly in fight adjustments and uh, in, in, in the game plan too. You know, a, a lot of it, uh, these past couple fights has just been me uh, kind of listening to my own head and, and, and just maybe bouncing some ideas off of the coaches that I already have, but there's not that, that guy to kind of guide me and tell me. So when the fight actually happens and when it really boils down to it, uh, and, and there are adjustments that need to be made. There, there's, I'm listening to my own head and, and, you know, that's okay sometimes, but you know, sometimes you need that outside eye looking in, uh, somebody who's been there, very, very experienced at MMA uh, and already knows what he's looking at. And I think Faraz is gonna be mm. that guy. That's, that's, that's what I'm missing. Who do you think your main training partners will be when you get out there? Uh, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll see. You know, when, when I was there last time, it, it, there's a lot of guys that nobody really knows about. That, that's kind of what makes every gym uh, uh, kind of what it is. Mm. It, it's the guys that nobody really knows who, who are just monsters and who are just studs. Of course, I'm still going to train with guys like uh, GSP. Uh, that's going to be a big one. You know, he's he was one of my idols growing up. So it's like, it's like to to train underneath that or some or even just to get somebody like that to see you train. I'm gonna be trying to impress impress them. So uh, it's gonna it's gonna bring out the best of me. So today is uh, September 12th, I believe. Uh, 11. Or 12, 12, you're right, you're right, you're right. One of the two, yeah, September yeah, 11th and 12th. Yeah, so you're going out to Montreal at one-way ticket. Yep, and, and then we'll see from there. <laughs> I'm staying there until whatever fight I get. Okay. And, uh, you know, I, I, I'm not going to let uh, even a, a fight offer kind of dictate my pace. You know, I, this is when I wanted to fight. Uh, I said I wanted to fight on that Madison Square Garden card. If it's around that, that, that time, then, then that's what I'm looking at. Hmm. Um, I mean, what, what are your conversations been like with the UFC in terms of getting on that card? So, you know, we had conversations maybe two weeks ago. Uh, I threw out some names. Wonder Boy was one. Uh, Luke was one. Uh -oh. And uh, they <laughs> end up making them two fights happen. So, you know, I, I think the, the welterweights, they, they look at me and they're like, oh, he, he, you know, he, he's a big risk for not a lot of reward or, or, or however they're looking at I, I don't think a lot of them want to fight me, to be honest. Mm. Um, that, that's kind of the position I'm in now. But... Uh, I told them I'll, I'll take whatever fight, you know, I, I, I'll go back down to 55 if I need to, you know, if uh, after looking at that last fight with Khabib, I did an interview before that fight, when before Khabib fought Dustin, and I wasn't, you know, I wasn't too impressed or I wasn't too, you know, kind of hype on it. I thought Usman was going to be the bigger challenge, and for me, I like the biggest challenge out there, but after seeing the way that Khabib kind of handled Dustin, I might want a piece of that cake. I, hmm. I might want. I might want a piece of that. That's how you're basing your decision is is which champion you would rather fight. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> really? yeah, yeah, yeah. I need a. I, I like the biggest, the biggest target that I can find. And and right now everybody sees Khabib as. I mean, they already kind of saw it before, but now I'm even kind of coming around to it. Is 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 he's the real challenge out there? He's you know he's the guy that's going to challenge John Jones for the pound for pound title and all this and blah blah blah. That's the kind of fight that gets me up. That, that's, that's, that's what wakes me up in the morning. Well, you know how a lot of people are going to react to the idea of you going to 155. They're going to be like, dude, you, you struggled to get there. Why would you go back? You know, you, you went to 170. Yeah, you didn't win that fight, but 
get settled, get comfortable in that new weight class? Like, why go back? There are a lot of big fights to be had. You know, it, it's kind of always been in the back of my mind. Um, right now, I'm actually lighter than, than what I was when I was going on to 55, even though I have been trying to, to bulk up a little bit more uh, for a 170 pound, pound fight. But, I, you know, health wise and everything, I think I'm in, I'm in peak shape right now. I think I'm, I'm getting ready to start a training camp in, in, in a better position than I was for any of my other 55 pound fights. So, uh, it, as long as the challenge is right and as long as uh, the fight is right, then, then it, you'll, you'll see the best me. Do you feel like, because this has kind of been going on for a while with you, you mm -hmm. know, this sort of like you're an in betweener, you know, mm -hmm. and like the whole 165 conversation and all that. I mean, do you. Do you, do you sort of feel like you, you don't have a home still? Is that sort of the feeling? Yeah, a little bit. I ain't gonna lie, you know, if I did, then, uh, then you know, I'd be lying to you if I said I, if I didn't feel like that a little bit. But, you know, I think 155 is, has always been kind of that home for me. It's always been where, where I started and that, that's the title that I wanted first. You know, I was gonna go, you know, I'm like, okay, I bounce up 170 makes a little makes more sense i could be healthier i could show up and fight more but uh i didn't factor in these guys just don't want to fight at 170 you know they, they, there's a whole lot of muddiness that kind of happened at, at 170 you know kamaro doesn't want to fight colby and now that you know they they're, they're making some other weird title that's going on and, and it's just all this uh you know it, it's it's a lot to, th to throw into the mix for me i just want to get back to winning ways i just want to fight so if I got to fight at 155, I got to fight at 170. If they make a, a, a 175 or 165, whatever, I just want to fight. So let's just, let's just get that in, and, and, and then I'll talk about you know homes and, and, and championships, and I'll talk about all that later. But mm. right now, it's about the fight. So what are you expecting then? Is, is 155 pretty? Is that is that what we should expect, or is it still kind of up in the air depending on what they offer you? I think it it, it I think it's pretty solid. You know, I, I think 155 makes a lot of sense. Um, like I said, after seeing the way that Khabib was in his last fight, uh, that, that just intrigues me too much. And especially uh, if they make Khabib versus Tony, you know, Tony is one that, that I really want back. I think that's a fight that people really want to see again uh, is me and Tony Ferguson in a rematch mm -hmm. um, or me and Khabib. So uh, I, I think with the right fight, I hear they going to Moscow and I hear that uh, uh, Islam might want to fight. Mm. So with the right fight, I, I, I might I might wake up for that. Wow. Okay. So you've been you've been pretty you've been pretty committed to this idea of fighting in New York, but you'd be open to Moscow if it was Islam. If it's Islam. Huh. If it's Islam. You know, I don't think I don't know if they'd accept it. You know, I know Ali. He he he's a smart man. He gonna keep the the boy away from me for a long time. But uh, me and Islam, you know, on a co-main in, in, in Moscow, that that sounds kind of good to me. Hmm. Uh, Have you pitched that to the UFC? Uh, you, you the man. You the man I'm talking to We're right pitching now. it right now. We're pitching it right now. <laughs> just, if I say it, then it's work. Okay. Um, I mean, beyond that, is there anything else? Or, or is that... Is I that mean, there, the, there's some other fights that, that are they're intriguing, you know. Uh, uh, I think Gregor Gillespie is still out there, too. You know, he, he, me and him have, have had a little words about it. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, he don't sound too interested. But in New York, fighting Gregor. Uh, who's from the, the area and you know going into that in enemy territory for me I'm already going to be on the east coast being in Montreal. It's, it's going to be a short flight short short trip So mm -hmm. uh, that makes a lot of sense too. I mean regardless of who you fight I, um, I mean, I'm just gonna be frank with you here There are a lot of people out there that say Kevin can't fight past the first second round yeah. You know, that's that's sort of the the, the knock on you right yeah. now I mean, how, how do you respond to that and, and how how do you look at that? Like is that fair? Is that is that the biggest issue facing your game right now? I mean, of course not. You know, I've already had a five-round fight uh, that went the full distance. You know, my last uh, six fights have all been main events, five-rounders uh, that I've been preparing for. You know, like I, said, I think it's just tactically in some of the fights of, of me making errors and, and not making adjustments where I should. Uh, and, and, and we'll solve that. And we'll solve that during training camp. And, you know, if it, of course, people are going to say what they're going to say. I really don't give a fuck. I'm gonna do me. Uh, I'm gonna continue to try and get better and better and better. And that's what you're gonna see in my next fight. And then after the next fight, then tell me what you think if, if I can go five rounds or not that I've already done before. But, you know. <laughs> is it uh, is it a situation where 
Like, like specifically while I'm looking at back at your last fight, mm -hmm. um, you know, even the commentators were talking about just the amount of energy that you expended in, in the first round. Yeah. Is it more of like a, a, a preparing in camp and getting your body ready to go and, and sustain that type of pace yeah. or is it about making, or is it about changing your style a little bit? I think it's, not gonna lie, I, I've got a very do or die type attitude. You know, I, I'm very just balls to the wall, go, 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 go. Uh, you know, I, I feel like a fucking superhero when I get in there and, and, and I get going. Mm -hmm. It's just the truth. But sometimes I, I need that guy. Robert Fallis was that guy for me to kind of pull the reins back a little bit, you know, to, to kind of uh, cage me a little bit and, and just let me out in certain bursts. Mm -hmm. um, and without that guy being there to do that, you know, I just kind of feel like I can do it all and I'm just going to go balls to the wall and, and see how it goes. And I, and I think that's uh, the, the prime example of that fight. Uh, it's happened once before, you know, it's, it's something that I'm trying to adjust on my own, but it, it's much easier or much better with, with somebody on the outside looking in. And, and I think yeah. that's, the, that's the main thing that I need to fix. And after that fight um, with, with Dos Anjos, you put out that, that video on Instagram, which was, which was very cool. You know, it's, it's, it's cool to see when fighters, you know, show that emotion and, and kind of let people in. Why did you decide to, to be so open about it and put that out there in the public? You know, I've always been kind of like against social media a little bit, you know, I, I just, I seen what it did for my little brother and it just, it, to me, it's, it wasn't healthy, you know, and, and, and it's too much of me put, or people putting out what, what you want somebody to see. So that was like one of the moments where it's like, okay, this ain't, this ain't pretty, you know what I mean? This ain't, this ain't the glitz and the glamour and it's not the Floyd Mayweather, uh, you know, lifestyle type. Uh, it, but this is the real of it. This is this is the the things that we really have to face mm -hmm. uh, going into the and, and like I said during that fight, a lot of things spoke to me. And and, and since that fight, you know, I've kind of taken a step back from everything. Uh, I've kind of you know, to be honest, I've quieted down a lot and and and, and kind of got into my own head and, and had uh, them conversations that I need to have with just me and, and whoever else is in the room. Um, so, you know, that, that was one of the moments where I feel like I, I just wanted to, at the end of the day, I just want to show the real me to, to people. And I, I think I might make a readjustment on, on social media. You know, I might make a reappearance a little bit. And uh, it's going to be a little different style than, than, than what I think normal people are, are, are doing. Huh. The, the Kevin Lee that we saw a few years ago, was that, was that not you? It, it was, but it's... it's, it's it's me exaggerating, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's me uh, uh, doing what I gotta do to, to get out there, you know, because, because I'm gonna be real, like it's, it's I, I, I got my, my back up against the wall and going against this, you know, it's, it's Wonder Boy is gonna get the pick of the fight over me, you know, like why, why is that? Uh, somebody like Darren Till, he's gonna get the bigger, big fight, big pick, you know, he's gonna be co-main on the pay-per-view, he got knocked out in his last two fights. You know, I, yeah, I, I, I might have lost, but, you know, I was competitive in every fight that I've been, that you ever seen me in. Why is that? Hmm. I got to make twice as much noise as these guys just to get, you know, in, in the same position. So I kind of knew that a couple years ago, kind of stepping up and, and, and doing it. Um, and now I'm, I'm doing the same thing, but, you know, just, just, just readjusting, you know, slowly as, as, as I get older, as I get to know myself more. Uh, then I'll get the people. I'll let the people know me a little bit more. Mm. I mean, one of I think the most interesting thing you said in that video was it makes you question everything you believe in. Yeah. Would you mind expanding on that because that's that's pretty fascinating to me. Yeah. Uh, you know, sometimes you you you. I, I think everybody's kind of have a little voice in the back of their head, almost. You know, and, and, and whatever that is, you know, whatever you believe in and whatever uh, 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 that is for you, I think it changes from person to person. But to me, it's it's like. I think there's just this energy uh, uh, about the universe that you can kind of tap into sometimes. And, and right before that fight, if you would have asked me, I, I swear to God, I, I, I was in it and I tapped into it and I, and I heard, I, and I heard it. But then when the when the, when the fight didn't go my way or or, the, or, or didn't go how I saw it uh, going or or what was told to me, it was like, damn, like. It, it was, did I hear what I, what I thought I heard or, or, you know, what's going on here? You know, it, it made me question a whole lot of things. In these past couple of months, I've been searching for the answers to them questions. Uh, I feel like I got them a little bit. I don't, you know, to be honest with you, I, I, I won't know. Maybe I won't ever know until, mm -hmm. you know, I get to the end of this thing. But 
uh, that that's part of the journey, and that's part of uh, of fighting. That's part of of, of growing and, and and getting older. And uh, you know, it's just what can you do? Is your is your confidence still as high as as, as it has been before, or has it, that taken a knock? It, yeah, it always is high. I mean, <laughs> I, I still again like even in that last fight, you know, I, I it, it's only ever been me beating myself. I haven't met the man yet to beat me. That's just that. It, that's just the truth of it. That's not. That's not. You know, it's not me being overconfident or brash. Yeah, can I be beaten? Of course. I mean, I, I have before. But uh, if I don't beat myself, I, I don't think there's a man out there to do it. So, but you know, against any other man, yeah, I'm. I'm, I'm the most confident dude in the room. Well, that's good to hear. Uh, last thing, um, let's go ahead and just double down on this on this uh, fight that you're trying to pick. Yeah. Why are you interested with it with with Islam specifically? What about, what about him interests you? You know, people see him as uh, he's he's the next Khabib. He's coming up. Um, I've kind of always had my eye on him. You know, we, we MMA is a very small circle. I you know we know a lot of the same people. We you know I hear about the little rumblings like oh yeah Islam can he he can fight uh, and I'm like oh he can fight <laughs> okay well we'll see yeah Khabib will probably be in his corner yep you know I'll be training with George. There's talks of trying to make Khabib and George happen. There's a lot of little, you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of little storylines there. There's a lot of lot of little things for me to <laughs> for bounce around in my head. There's a lot of it's a lot of motivation in, mm-hmm. in, in a fight like that. So uh yeah, me and Islam, Ali, holla at me. Cool. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports and analysis, download the ESPN app. And for live streaming and special content, subscribe to ESPN+.